Five ways to live more frugally on a budget. Are you tired of the paycheck to paycheck cycle, drowning in stress every time bills come around? Or are you fed up with feeling like your back is pressed against the wall constantly due to random financial burdens that just happen to pop up? Well, today we're going to talk about five ways to simply live more frugally that will not only save you money, but revolutionize your entire life in the process. Stay tuned to the end of the video as we dive into the surprising and simply life-changing benefits of incorporating frugality into your life. Trust me, you won't want to miss this. To me, frugal living isn't about living cheaply or being afraid to spend money. It's more so about being intentional with your money and taking control of your own financial situation. You, yes you, have the ability to control where you eat, what you drive, how often you go out, when you go on vacation, and among other things, how you spend your hard-earned money. We live in an age of instant gratification and consumerism with social media making it harder than ever to hold back on spending due to the feeling of needing to keep up with other people's lifestyles, or better yet, the fear of missing out. No one likes to feel inferior and social media can simply magnify consumerism to new heights. If you find this content helpful, do me a favor and give this video a like for the almighty algorithm. Cutting to the chase, here are five ways I found to be frugal yet not cramp my lifestyle in the process. Trust me, when you get into a good place financially and don't have the burden of lack of funds weighing you down, life gets a whole lot more enjoyable. With that being said, let's get into it. Number one, be mindful of housing expenses. It's no secret that rent or a mortgage are usually the biggest monthly expenses that the average person faces. After all, with the way the housing market has been going in the last few years alone, where you live can take up to around 20 to 50% of your budget, but it's important to live within your means when it comes to the roof over your head. Realistically, housing should be around 25% of your take-home pay each month. If it's much higher, this is the first expense I would cut down on. Now let's say your household income is 9,000 and after taxes, healthcare, and retirement contributions, you'd be looking at about $6,800. If we use the 25% of take-home pay rule, housing should take up no more than 1,700 each month. Now this is easier said than done for some, but it's the quickest way to pad your budget, being that housing is usually a family's biggest monthly expense. Number two, you are not what you drive. Let me repeat, you are not what you drive. Not so surprisingly, the second largest expense that most Americans have is their car payment. The average new car payment is now a whopping 750 a month with the average used car payment above 550. We have to understand the difference between assets and liabilities. Cars are depreciating liabilities, meaning they only go down in value as the miles and years roll on. You can argue that certain classic cars can hold or go up in value, but that's the exception, not the rule. I've made it a point to completely wipe out car payments in my household, and it was a great decision. With both car payments gone, we now have that much more money in our budget for a variety of things. This is not to say that I don't want a different car, believe me, I do, but I know that practicing delayed gratification is wise until the right time to buy in the future comes along. The right time is different for everyone, but typically you want to buy cars in cash if you can. I was sitting down to dinner with a successful gentleman the other day and he told me a quote that stuck with me. He said, if it doesn't put money in my pocket every month, I buy it in cash. What he's trying to say is that he'll take out a loan for actual investments like real estate, buying businesses, and other cash flowing endeavors, but he won't take out a loan on something that drops in value that he has to continually pay interest on. Number three, eating out is killing your wallet. You might not realize it, but a night out for two in today's market ends up costing well over $100. From $15 craft cocktails to $18 appetizers to $35 entrees, let's just say going out has gotten pretty expensive. Eating out can definitely add up 
quick. So making sure you're watching how you spend your money when you do decide to go out is key. If you're in a place of living paycheck to paycheck or close to it, this is something I would 100% stop doing until you've gotten to a good place financially. Now on to alcohol. From experience, I've seen my peers go out to a night of drinking only to find out that they dropped $100 to cut in line to get into a popular bar and then spent another $60 on the drinks themselves. Obviously, not a great feeling to wake up to the next day. The point is, cutting out or at least cutting back on alcohol has the potential to greatly reduce your spending habits every month and add to your monthly savings which can then be spent on actual essentials or be invested. Number four, cut out mindless online shopping and subscriptions. This is another big one for a lot of people. You'd be surprised how many people don't even know that they're being charged for services like Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, gym memberships, and many other monthly renewing services that they simply don't use. This is a quick and effective way to potentially save a few hundred dollars each month. And there are services out there like Truebill that will help you easily find and cancel these subscriptions, which is a big plus. We all may think that we need the latest and greatest clothing and accessories, but if we truly look inside our closets, I'm willing to bet most people can find things they've purchased and have never even worn or even taking the tag off of. With one or two click online shopping platforms like amazon.com, it's easier than ever to buy anything with a click of a mouse and have the item show up at your door within a few days. Making sure we are watching what websites we go to and how we spend our money online has the potential to save thousands of dollars over the year and keep our closets a little more organized with items we'll truly wear. Number five, you don't need the latest tech. I'm talking phones, tablets, laptops, software, computers, VR headsets, and so much more. I myself am even guilty of hopping on the early adopter train when the new Oculus VR headset came out. You know what happened? I used it for about two to three months and then never picked it up again. It now just collects dust in my office behind me. Similarly, needing to upgrade to the newest phone or computer when it comes out just isn't practical. With the way these tech companies upgrade their devices each year, there usually isn't much of a difference in hardware or software anyway. If you can wait a few years to upgrade your must-have tech devices, that alone can end up saving multi-thousands over the years. If you are an early adopter and really value the latest and greatest, getting secondhand tech is usually the way to go. In my experience, waiting a few months after a new device comes out usually ends up getting you a nice 20 to 40% discount on that item. You can find these deals on sites like eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and local seller apps like OfferUp, LetGo, and many more. Okay, so we just went through five ways to live frugally without totally changing your lifestyle in the process. After hearing these tips, what are your thoughts? Do you think incorporating these into your lifestyle and living more frugally will help you reach your goals quicker? Let me know in the comments below. I hope this video was helpful for you, and if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel to never miss an update. Also, drop a comment if you have any other money-saving habits or ideas I should cover in future videos. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.